Okay, everyone. So, kind of figured this day would never come, but I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background. Everyone, meet the donor car. Also, everyone, meet Tigo again. Yes, you've seen him before. Uh, finally, the car's turned up, so now we can go to the chop chop. So, this is going to be interesting. And uh, slowly it goes into the shed, minus the steering column that we've just worked out. So, that's going to be awfully fun to work out how to get it in there. But yeah, finally the cars are off. Okay, everyone. So running ridiculously late as per normal for me lately I don't know why um, but yeah also uh, you might notice that I um, haven't posted a video in a while either I was uh, away for a week or so uh, having a nice holiday with uh, some uh, people people I'd like to give a shout out to so Joanne, Lily and Tom, my uh, sort of week-long inmates um, at the resort, so uh, yeah. Um, but now what I'm doing is I'm on my way to Ray's place. Now, we're heading to Ray's place to uh, get rid of the all the wiring loom and stuff out of the car. Hopefully, um, we can also make a start on potentially chopping the tunnel out of this car as well. So, Ray's doing a, Ray and I went basically one third, two thirds in this car, so uh, Ray wanted all the running gear and stuff like that, and I just wanted the roller for a few panels and stuff, and obviously for the boot of the car, because I got sick of waiting for the free one. So, Ray's doing a six liter and six speed auto conversion into his Tirana sometime in the next 18 months, and um, we had a look at it and I don't know if you've ever seen inside a tunnel of a Tirana they um or an early H series holding for that matter I'm pretty sure they're roughly the same size um I don't think there's much difference between the pair but um you struggle to fit a coke can in there sideways and if anyone's ever seen a uh six speed auto out of a LS powered car or a 6L80 they are f massive and uh yeah, so I want to try and give him the best start possible, so whether he uses the tunnel or not, I don't know how effective that's going to be, but the rest of the car that I've got is going to the scrappies, so I mean, if I cut the tunnel out, then so be it. I mean, it's no really, you know, no skin off my nose whether that uh, actually happens or not. So yeah, uh, hopefully get around to Ray's place soon, apologies again Ray for being super late, but hey. Um, I also made him a present, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here or not, but, um, probably not, but, um, I, uh, made him some, uh, genuine reproduction SLR 5000 stickers. Now, I can't remember whether he actually owns an LH or an LX. I rolled the dice on LH, but I somehow have a feeling that it's gonna be an LX Trata. You know what? No, on my log, it'll be an LX one. But, um, yeah. So, I'll uh, update you when I get there. All right, keep watching guys. Okay, so we're back at Ray's place. Just trying to um, keep going and get all the loom stripped out of this car. So I've worked out that old engineers are real assholes and whoever designed the loom, wow. I'll tell you what, they um, really gave zero care about anyone else trying to get a loom out of the car. So, in saying that, right? Now the loom was completely wrapped around the crash bar that you can see there. So that had to be cut out. Like, normally you should just be able to unclip all that off the crash bar. It was wrapped in there. So we think that somebody's actually done some modifications to this loom. Now, Ray needs the entire loom to go and exchange it. So, you want to see how much wiring there is in a sort of very late model car all of that there is just the body side loom that's all the 
rear loom that goes into the boot and everything like that. And then we come up front here and uh, that's all the engine bay wiring and all the engine bay loom that still has to come back out of the car. So we're still trying to crack on and get all the wiring out. I was hoping today to have the tunnel cut out and at least the fuel tank ripped out. Still might get a chance to get the fuel tank ripped out. But um, yeah, I need to get this one step closer to getting home so that I can go the choppy chop on the part that I actually want, which is uh, the boot. So if we can get all the boot, we've uh, got our trusty boot stick, thanks to the boot gas struts being absolutely useless on this thing. Um, good news is though, factory fuel flap. I mean, can't go wrong there. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at now. So gonna keep cracking on and trying to get this wiring taken out. chopped up the old chop shop V is finally here um so yeah i guess that's what it is yes help a dog so yes uh this used to be uh, a six liter and six liter auto V. obviously now it's a lot more powerful having me in here but you know that's the things we have to deal with so yeah i'll um give us a quick tour around Okay, so let's give you the grand tour. Just get your shed door open so we get a little bit more light in here. So, as you can tell, another beautiful North Queensland day. Miserable. Poor Ute needs a wash and a polish. But, still looking like a Snickers. Damn snack she is. Okay, so, here's basically the part of the car that we're really interested in. Oh, really interested in. Oh yeah, by the way, boot gas struts are fucked. But, there's all the back of the car, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at now. Okay, so, that's where we're at. This is basically the part of the car that we're actually after, so in the boot area. As you uh, noticed, uh, the boot closes rather savagely because the gas struts are absolutely fingered, but that doesn't really matter. So, really, we're kind of really only after that part of the car. So... I guess that's kind of where we start. So, I'll quickly show you inside the car as well. Probably not many people would have seen a completely, completely gutted VE. Yes, there's obviously crap just shoved back in here that never made it to the tip trailer for some apparent reason. But yeah, that's where we're at. So, I've got to cut the tunnel out of the car for Ray. He wants to maybe potentially look at using part of it in his Tirana for the six liter and six speed auto conversion, but I don't really know how that's gonna be successful or not, but hey, I'll cut the tunnel out. If he uses it, he uses it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. So yeah. Um, the other handy part about this is it's actually got three good doors on it that are the same color as my other car. It's only got Weirdly, it's uh, 
I did have body colour mirrors, as you can tell, but someone decided they'd go full race back and paint them black for some unapparent reason. Uh, most of the Calais Chrome trim on this car, except for the door belts and then the door surrounds. They were the only parts that were left chrome, so the old Calais grille has been completely blacked out, holding line badge blacked out. And then I've got the actual bonnet piece that goes on the bonnet. That was blacked out as well with cheap black spray paint. So, yeah. The other part of this that's interesting is, yes, we're going to cut the back of this car off, but we're also going to do something else. See this dent here? So, that is your atypical, um, oops, I've ran too close to a pole in a supermarket car park. So what I want to do is after we've hacked the boot off and everything like that, I'm going to have a crack at fixing that. And no, I'm not just going to bog and forget. I'm actually going to try and straighten some of that out and then I'll cut it and then weld it and re-weld it and then kind of finish it off. I mean, I don't know how many time or how much time I'll invest in that part of it because end of the day, I'm really only cutting the boot and then the rest goes to the scrappies. But I mean, it could be something handy out there that somebody might, you know, potentially want to have a crack at themselves if they've, you know, at least had a cheeky little pole swipe and then they can make it look a little bit better and then just, um, like in my other video, uh, go to Super Sheep, get some body color paint mixed up and smack that back over the top. So at least it doesn't stand out as much until I can get it professionally repaired. All right, guys, I'm going to jump into pulling some other bits apart, but... I'm, uh, yeah, I've got to pull the rest of the roof lining out. And then once I've done that, that's when I'll uh, start getting the chop chop on. Um, probably won't be in this video, but um, we might at least make a start on the tunnel. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers for watching, Legends. Okay, Legends. That's probably going to do it for this one. Um, I have made a start on uh, getting some of the tunnel chopped out, but... I mean, not really enough to sort of warrant putting it in this video. Kind of want to put all the me chopping it up into one at least, or at least maybe a couple by the time I work out exactly how I'm going to cut the boot and get all the glass out safely without smashing and having a shed full of glass. So, uh, yeah, look, um, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, get the bell on, ding. Um, and apologies for not getting a video out for a while, but kind of unavoidable circumstances there. So, yeah. Hope you like the content and uh, as always, cheers legends, thanks for watching.